Though severe earthquakes in the north of France and Britain are rare, the 1580 Dover Straits earthquake appears to have been one of the largest in the recorded history of England, Flanders or northern France. Its effects started to be felt in London at around 6 o'clock in the evening of 6 April 1580, being Wednesday in the Easter week. Location and magnitude A study undertaken during the design of the Channel Tunnel estimated the magnitude of the 1580 quake at 5.3 to 5.9 ML and its focal depth at 20 to 30 km, in the lower crust. Being relatively deep, the quake was felt over a large area and it is not certain where the epicenter was located. The Channel Tunnel study proposed three possible locations, two south of Calais and one offshore. The barycenter of the isoseismals with intensities IV to 7 lies in the Boulonnais, 10 km east of Devra. The barycenter of the 7 isoseismal lies about 1 km northeast of Ardres, and the barycenter of the only Pleistoseismal zone lies in the English Channel. The British Geological Survey estimates the magnitude to be 5.7 to 5.8 ML. Topic Records The earthquake is well recorded in contemporary documents, including the Earthquake Letter from Gabriel Harvey to Edmund Spencer mocking popular and academic methods of accounting for the tremors. It fell during Easter week, an omen filled connection that was not lost on the servant poet James Yates, who wrote ten stanzas on the topic. O oh, sudden motion, and shaking of the earth. No blustering blasts, the weather calm and mild. Good Lord, the sudden rareness of the thing. A sudden fear did bring, to man and child. They verily thought, as well in field as town. The earth should sink her, and the houses all fall down. Well, let versus print this present in our hearts. And call to God, for noia neither we more. Crawing of him mercy for our misdeeds, our sinful leaves from heart for to deplore. For let versus think of this token doth portend. If scourge nere hand, if we do still offend. Yeats' poem was printed in 1582 in the Castath of Courtesy. English writer Thomas Churchyard, then aged 60, was in London when the quake struck and he drafted an immediate account which was published two days later. In his 2007 biography of Richard Hakluyt, historian Peter C. Mancall provides extensive extracts from Churchyard's 8 April 1580 pamphlet, A Warning to the Wise, A Fear to the Fond, A Bridle to the Luder, and A Glass to the Good, written of the late earthquake chanced in London and other places, 6 April, 1580, for the glory of God and benefit of men, that wherely can walk, and wisely judge. Set forth in verse and prose, by Thomas Churchyard, gentleman. Mancall notes that Churchyard's pamphlet provides a sense of immediacy so often lacking in retrospective writing. According to Churchyard, the quake could be felt across the city and well into the suburbs, as, "...a wonderful motion and trembling of the earth," shook London and Churches, palaces, houses, and other buildings did so quiver and shake, that such as were then present in the same were toosed to and fro as they stood, and others, as they sate on seats, driven off their places." The English public was so eager to read about the quake that a few months later, Abraham Fleming was able to publish a collection of reports of the Easter earthquake, including those written by Thomas Churchyard, Richard Tarleton described as the writing clown of Shakespeare's day, Francis Shackleton, Arthur Golding, Thomas Twine, John Philippes, Robert Gittens, and John Grafton, as well as Fleming's own account. Published by Henry Denham on 27 June 1580, Fleming's pamphlet was titled, A Bright Burning Beacon, for warning all wise virgins to trim their lamps against the coming of the bridegroom. 
containing a general doctrine of sundry signers and wonders, specially earthquakes both particular and general, a discourse of the end of this world, a commemoration of our late earthquake, the 6 of April, about 6 of the clock in the evening 1580. And a prayer for the appeasing of God's wrath and indignation. Newly translated and collected by Abraham Fleming. Impact Further from the coast, furniture danced on the floors and wine casks rolled off their stands. The belfry of Notre Dame de Lorette and several buildings at Lille collapsed. Stones fell from buildings in Arras, Douai, Bethune and Rouen. Windows cracked in the Cathedral of Notre Dame at Pontoise, and blocks of stone dropped ominously from the vaulting. At Beauvais, the bells rang as though sounding the tocsin. Many deaths were reported from Saint Amand les Eaux. In Flanders, chimneys fell and cracks opened in the walls of Ghent and Oudenard, killing several people. Peasants in the fields reported a low rumble and saw the ground roll in waves. On the English coast, sections of wall fell in Dover and a landslip opened a raw new piece of the White Cliffs. At Sandwich a loud noise emanated from the channel, as church arches cracked and the gable end of a transept fell at St. Peter's Church. Near Hythe, Kent, Saltwood Castle—made famous as the site where the plot was hatched in December 1170 to assassinate Thomas Becket—was rendered uninhabitable until it was repaired in the 19th century. In London, half a dozen chimney stacks and a pinnacle on Westminster Abbey came down, two children were killed by stones falling from the roof of Christ's Church Hospital. Indeed, many Puritans blamed the emerging theatre scene of the time in London, which was seen as the work of the devil, as a cause of the quake. There was damage far inland, in Cambridgeshire, where stones fell from Ely Cathedral, part of Stratford Castle in Essex collapsed. In Scotland, a local report of the quake disturbed the adolescent James VI, who was informed that it was the work of the devil. There were aftershocks. Before dawn the next morning, between four and five o'clock, further houses collapsed near Dover due to aftershocks, and a spate of further aftershocks was noticed in East Kent on 1 to 2 May. Topic. Other earthquakes in the Dover Straits 198 years earlier there was a very similar event, the magnitude 5.8 to 6.0-1382 Dover Straits earthquake, with an estimated epicenter not far from that estimated for the 1580 event. Two later quakes in the Dover Strait, in 1776 and 1950, both thought to be around magnitude 4, were noted in the 1984 compilation by R. M. W. Musson, G. Nielsen and P. W. Burton. None in this study occurred before 1727, but the same team devoted an article to the 1580 earthquake that year, the classic study. Some scientists have suggested that the 1580, 1776 and 1950 quakes are all linked to periodic tectonic activity that results in a tremor occurring in the Dover Straits approximately every 200 years. The 2007 Kent earthquake was initially thought to have occurred in the Dover Straits, but later analysis showed it to have occurred directly under the town of Folkestone in Kent. See also Geology of the United Kingdom List of earthquakes in the United Kingdom Notes and references External links 
Shakespeare, The Global Shakespeare Discussion List, 2002 Archives Friday 26 April 2002, and following messages, which, taken together, compile references used to write this article. Geology Shop, UK Earthquakes. Source for much detail in this article. European Historical Earthquakes Archive, the 1580 Dover Straits Earthquake. Historical Earthquakes studies on the earthquake with maps and macroseismic intensities. <laughs>